it's a joy to be able to be there to help family members who sometimes don't know what to do. Um, and so we're kind of the insight um, to a lot of things that go on. She is very sensitive to my wife's situation. She is helping to enable her do things that she couldn't do before Sarah became a caregiver. The big problem we had when, when Sarah first started was Ellen wouldn't eat or drink. And now she's eating and drinking and regaining her physical health. And as she regains her physical health, that's helped her mental acuity. It doesn't restore her memory because she's got Alzheimer's. But she's much more interactive. She's talking now with people. She's actually walking on her own a little bit. She walks all of us into the ground every day. And a lot of that is because Sarah's constantly willing to help Ellen do her best and do things that she wouldn't otherwise do. One thing I have always told Ellen is that I will never take away her independence, never. So sometimes she even has doubt of what she's doing and I have to remind her that, you know, she's an intelligent woman and she's quite capable um, and where she needs assistance, I'm there to offer my help at whatever level that might be. Um, and so I love, I, I mean, I love all of you. I just, I think you're a great family, um, and I just feel blessed to be able to be part of your life and your wife's life, um, and it's just a very rewarding position that I'm in right now, um, and I, at one point, I just don't always know how good I really am, and I, I'm, I'm good at what I do, and I see that just with how I've able to, been able to help Ellen. Well, the, the other side of this story is that uh, Sarah's involvement and the involvement of other caregivers, but primarily Sarah's with us Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, 8 to 5. So she's clearly the primary caregiver. But what it has meant to me is that I can continue to live my life without worrying about whether Ellen's going to have a problem because if there's any issue, I know that Sarah or the other caregivers will call me right away. And I was told three years ago when Ellen was first diagnosed with Alzheimer's that I should not become a caregiver by default because if I became a caregiver, I would probably croak before my wife. And I didn't appreciate the significance of that until Ellen really started to get seriously ill. And it has meant that I it's hard, we've been married 57 years, but it's, it's hard for me to pull away, but I am able to only because I've got really competent, caring caregivers like Sarah to help. If I'm talking to people who are thinking about having caregivers or needing caregivers, it's every bit as important for them as it is for the person who's being cared for because you, you, you have to have somebody assume some of that burden because the emotional connection between you and the person who's got the illness is too intense for you to, to, to do what needs to be done. You just can't do it.